In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Homestead Act into law, encouraging the westward migration of millions of Americans. Were your ancestors among some of the millions enticed to move westward across the country? Let's learn more about the Homestead Act and the records it created for our genealogy research in today's video. Hi, I'm Melissa Finley. Welcome to Boundless Genealogy, where I help you squeeze more clues out of the records you find in your family history search so you can grow your family tree with more confidence and skill. This video is part of the migration series for the Project Genealogy Collaboration. Be sure to check out the rest of the fantastic videos in this series by clicking on the link in the description below or at the end of the video. When Abraham Lincoln signed the Homestead Act into law in May of 1862, it not only encouraged Americans to move westward for some free land, it also encouraged immigrants from other countries to come to America for the land. Because not only did the law provide for citizens to gain the land, it also provided for those who declared an intent to become a citizen. For a small filing fee, and five years of continuous residence on the land, a person could become the proud owner of 160 acres of public land. Homesteaders also had an option to buy the land outright after six months of continuous residence for $1.25 an acre. What a deal. Between 1862 and 1900, over 80 million acres of public land were distributed through the Homestead Act. The number of final homestead entries filed each year grew from 1.4 million acres in the first five years after the act passed to 42.5 million acres in 1915 and then steadily dropped off until just before World War II, although the act was not repealed until 1976. So who were the people obtaining homesteads? And what kind of records did it generate that can help us with our genealogy research? Soon after the Homestead Act was passed, newspaper articles and advertisements started to be broadcast across the country, encouraging people to take advantage of this act and get their land and move west. So here's an example from Kansas, announcing the Homestead Act. On the first day of January, 1863, this important and beneficial act takes effect. Any person, male or female, can, on the payment of $10, enter 160 acres of any of the public land. Or how about this one from Minnesota? Free homes in Minnesota. Under the Homestead Act recently passed by Congress, Minnesota offers to free settlement a much larger area of public lands. In fact, this article goes on to sing the praises of the Minnesota land. Three quarters of this surface consists of rolling prairie interspersed with frequent groves, oak openings, and belts of hardwood timber. The climate is beautiful and one of the most healthful and productive on the continent. So of course, Minnesota was trying to encourage people to come to their land for the Homestead Act. And here's an example of a flyer, a little brochure that went around advertising the free homestead land in Montana. It had a lot of information about how great the land was in the state of Montana. So this brought to mind to many Americans and many international folk who wanted to come to get land. They were imagining rolling acres, orchards, a nice cabin for their family. It was really the American dream to come and own your own piece of land. So let's look at this map of the country and see how this affected um, the country's population. So this act did not cover most of the Eastern states. All right, they were already claimed in other ways. The land there was taken care of in different ways. It was not available for public land. And then also the state of Texas had control of their own land. So this affected the other states that are highlighted in various shades of green and blue. So as you can see, some of the states had already taken care of their land in other ways and had already been largely settled. So they were not affected a lot, even though some of their land was open to the Homestead Act. 
So we have Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, each with well under 1% of their land that was finally um, claimed under the Homestead Act. Now, keep in mind, a lot of claims never finalized because you did have to live on the land for five years. You had to make improvements to it and you had to be there continuously and prove all of that at the end of those five years in order to obtain the land. So you can see um, some of the other states here, Missouri, Iowa, uh, also down in Louisiana and Mississippi, these all had less than 10% of their land that was finally claimed through the Homestead Act. Also some of the Western states like Nevada and Utah and Arizona. Um, then we have some that are in the teen range. We have Alabama and Florida, Idaho, Oregon, and California, all with between 10 and 18% of their land. And then we have the nice, lovely middle of the country with over 30% of the land claimed through the Homestead Act. In fact, the winner of this contest would be Nebraska with 45% of all of the land in Nebraska being claimed through the Homestead Act. So if you had family members that were leaving some of these Eastern areas or even some of the Southern areas and coming across, especially into the middle of the country um, or even a little farther West, they may have been coming for Homestead land. And it's worth looking into these records to see what you can find about their migration. So we start our search for our ancestors claiming homestead land at the U.S. Department of the Interior Bureau of Land Management website. This is the General Land Office records online. Now keep in mind, even if your ancestor migrated across during this time period, and you think they might have claimed a homestead, they may have started the process and not finished. The records you will find on this particular website are only for the people who completed the process. But there's a lot of records here. A lot of land was claimed, so it's still worth a look. And even if your ancestor didn't doesn't show up on this website, they may have traveled across the country hoping to claim the homestead land and just could never complete the process. So we want to go to search documents and we want to choose one of the states that's available to us. I want to search in the state of Oklahoma. All right. And I'm going to say any county and I'm going to look for my Barton ancestors. I think that William Barton went here to Oklahoma to claim some land. So I'm going to search the patents in Oklahoma for William Barton. All right, and we have a few different records for William Barton's claiming land in Oklahoma. All right, if we look at the counties, we have three pieces of land being claimed in Cleveland County. We have some in Payne, Cato, and a lot in Harper. All right, so it looks like if you were after these ancestors in Harper, you would have William E, William H, William R, and William W. You might have a little sorting to do if you were looking in Harper County. Uh, thankfully from other records, such as the census, I know that my Bartons were in Cleveland County. So this is the record I'm after. Even though they've got three different pieces of land listed here, it's all in this section number seven of township 10 North and range three West. And we'll talk about how this is divided up in just a minute. So we're going to come over here and click on the accession. This is going to give us a little more details. So they filed for this land in the Oklahoma land office and it's under the 1862 Homestead Act. They here's their document numbers. And their total acres would be 160.32. Right? Now, one of the coolest things about this website that I really like is that you can come down here and ask this computer program to map the particular lots that your ancestors claimed. 
And so here are the lots. You can see they're all adjoining right here in this section. And so how the land was divided for the Homestead Act was the land was divided into six mile square townships. Each township was divided into one mile square sections and a quarter section consisted of 160 acres. Each person that wanted to claim a homestead got to claim a one quarter section, right? That's how this land worked. So I like that this map helps us to pinpoint exactly where their land was. Now you can go up here and you can go to the patent image. The patent would be the document that the ancestor obtained when they had finally claimed the land after their five years of residency and proving that they had approved the land and everything else that was required of them in order to claim their homestead. So here we have the United States of America. This has been deposited in the General Land Office. This is the certificate of Oklahoma to Bertha Barton, widow of William C. Barton. So William C. apparently died between the time he began the homestead process and when the five years was up and the land could be claimed. So his widow went to complete the process on the land. And it says that he has met all of the requirements for the lot numbered one and two and the east half of the northwest quarter of section seven in Township 10 North arranged three west of the Indian Meridian in Oklahoma, containing 160 acres and 32 hundredths of an acre. So right here it gives the same description of land that we just looked at on the map and that the um, index page told us was their claim, All right? So this is the actual certificate that she finalized the claim and they received the land. This patent document that we're looking at is not the only document that would have been generated from this homestead. This would just be the final paper, the final certificate showing that they now are the owners of the land. So in a future video, I will talk about those other documents you can go and find based on this patent to expand your knowledge of the land your ancestors bought and the proof that they had to show in order to obtain this homestead. I want to show you one more thing on this BLM website. That is if you go to the third tab on related documents, you will see that this is showing me all of the claims in section seven. So we can see all of the neighbors that claimed land near the Barton. So these would be their neighbors in that section of land as well. So we have Daniel Hughes, Scott Page and Asa Stanley. And that might be an important thing to know at some point in your research to know who their neighbors would have been. So this website brings that together for us and that's very handy. Did any of your ancestors take advantage of the Homestead Act and move west across the country in search of land? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your ancestor's story. Be sure to watch the next video in this series with Genealogy TV. Railroads Across America. We'll see you next time.